everybody, hopping in to the three minute pool, going up against Kasparov06, a scary name. And let's see if we can get some of our rating back going up against the Sicilian. And earlier today I did a stream where we spent a long time analyzing the Portsmouth Gambit. So hopefully I got a little bit of prep under my belly. So go ahead and fall for this one. Yeah, okay, my first time ever. Rook takes b4. We were studying this on the stream. So I'm, I'm vastly prepared. This is my first time playing this. And I'm down three pawns. This is what we looked at, because it's check. So it makes sense. And this is immediately losing. Wow, look at that. We win with our prep. Imagine not watching Vampire Chicken on Twitch today. I guess this guy wasn't in the audience. Most people play here, which is not very good. I play this, and then I'm threatening to go here. Still prep. Anybody on Twitch in the comment section today? We did it. <laughs> we are playing it for the first time. And I'm really excited, and I, I want to share a little bit of the analysis um, after the game. But basically, the analysis is like I'm winning. They have to, like, move away, and I get to, like, fork them. Uh, and then I, like, win. But now I have to actually kind of win it on my own. If he goes here, I go here. I'm actually threatening bishop to d6, which like wins a queen. So I don't know how black is meant to survive this. Like I'm going to go here and I'm, this is my biggest threat because my pieces are, are really restricting them. So I'm attacking the queen, but then I just go here. It looks like, no. Okay. Ah, okay. Wait, wait, no, I'm just so bad. There's okay. Obviously they're going to block with a knight. Okay. Obviously look, when you get out of prep, you lose a little bit of your confidence, but <laughs> suddenly I'm up material and I'm going to be able to safely castle. They're going to have to do some weird stuff. I'm going to let them go there and then I'm going to hit them with one of these. So let's misplace this king a little bit more. Maybe the king is going to run up here and maybe we get a, a good old fashioned king hunt. Maybe I can start with some knight to h4. No, okay, he doesn't want to do that. So let's go here. I'm like almost trapping this queen. <laughs> almost, but not really, not quite. Uh, okay. This looks like a very soft square. This knight is pinned. So hopefully it becomes very difficult for the opponents to make a lot of moves. They've walked into another pin. Uh, we do have this just to get our knight back into the game. And now this queen is trapped. Look at this. <laughs> it's just impossible to play this if you're the opponent. He's not giving up, though, so we're going to have to keep trying. I'll take this guy so that my queen can sneak in. It's up a queen for a knight, so I guess, you know, it wouldn't be my worst loss of all time if I somehow couldn't convert this. So maybe the opponent is right to carry on. Okay, let's just keep taking. Maybe when I make Luft, they'll resign, knowing that I'll, I'll no longer fall for a back rank trick. Or maybe that's enough. Hey, Twitch chat, we did it. <laughs> this is the Portsmouth Gambit, and it was it's really cool. I've been analyzing this quite a bit. Uh, if you do want to follow me, it's Vampire Chicken on Twitch. But it's a really cool opening against the Knight to C6 Sicilian. This is the Portsmouth Gambit. And in particular, we've spent a lot of time on this one because there is a common trap that my opponent did not fall for. But here you play d4 and you're getting ready to attack this knight. So d5 is the most played move, preventing you from playing d5 yourself. But now when you take, they take back with their queen, you play pawn to c4 attacking the queen. They know about en passant, so they take here. You can attack the queen, and from this position there's already like a lot of interesting moves. You could just defend your knight. You can also play d5 here, leaving this knight temporarily hanging. Or you can play rook to b1, which I find to be one of the more interesting ways, just immediately offering this knight. And my opponent was clever enough to play pawn to e6, which, if we turn the engine on, is one of the top moves. You can take, and it's about equal, black's a little bit better, or you can play some sort of random moves and black's like a little bit better, but I think it's very difficult to play. Now e6 now is actually the top choice. It's one of the best moves available to black. But after bishop to d2, bishop to b4, which is most popular, we were just looking at this today because there's this very interesting idea of taking on b4. 
And this basically forces the queen to come in. And we decided today that d5 is much better than knight to b5 because it gives you this option that after they take, you can bring your queen to the d5 square. I'm going to have to answer this phone call in just a minute. Um, and there's only one good move here for black, and that's queen to e4. And you get to this remarkable position that we did not get to today where after bishop to e3, it's important to keep your knight defended. You have ideas um, of immediately going here, and you're trying to go for this guy. And after king to f8, there's some knight to g5 attacking this queen. You're going to be bringing this queen out. Um, a lot of the times, if the queen is lingering around somewhere, you know, there's sometimes ideas of getting castled and playing like f4. There's a lot of just really strong attacks that you're able to generate. Um, it was queen f5, bishop c4. <laughs> we were looking at all this kind of like stuff, um, which is really fun. I think it's a lot easier to play as white. You can see we're down so much material and it's almost equal, which usually means it's very easy to play with white. Um, but more on that later when we get it in another game. In this one, my opponent made what I knew was a mistake. But queen to d6 seems so logical. It's actually played 38% of the time as opposed to the 61% of the time that people will play the right move. But it seems logical because you're trying to prevent the knight from coming to c7. But after bishop to f4, my knight gets to c7 anyway. The knight is protecting my bishop, so now the queen needs to move uh, for yet another time. And this is where there's a remarkable thing. Computer doesn't even consider what 91% of all humans do. There's 107 games, and 98% of the time, people are going to play here. This is the move that you're going to face most often. But after bishop to e2, the queen is actually in a horrible spot because you're still going to go here, and you're going to be threatening to win the queen. So my opponent went here, and around here is where I had to start thinking on my own. I played knight to c7, because obviously that's attacking this stuff. And then I thought I had some bishop d6, but obviously I don't. That He's going to be able to block with a knight. Well, I did it anyway. Um, and here I can trade queens would be a strong continuation. Bishop to d6 is also a very strong continuation. And I was just able to grab this rook. Now, for accuracy's sake, I do want to see how well I played from here. Uh, I got castled. They tried to bring the king up. Bishop to c4 is definitely fine. And I thought they were going to run this way. And maybe I was going to... My first thought was to go here. I hadn't fully calculated it. But maybe there's no way to actually entirely checkmate the king. But I gave the check. He went back. That makes it a little bit easier. I get my last piece into the game. And I'm able to bring my knight into this square. And really, everything just fell apart um, at this moment. So I went for the material. Uh, looks like maybe there were some slightly better moves here. But this was good enough for me to win this game. But was it good enough to get you to hit that subscribe button? I hope so, because I'm trying to become a full-time content creator. And all your support means a lot to me. See you later.